What's up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are talking about how to create and use proxies inside of Premiere Pro. Now, today in this video, I'm gonna show you two ways to create proxies, and at the very end, I'm gonna show you how to create a new ingest preset for creating custom proxies inside of Premiere Pro. Now, proxies are as simple as this. You have your regular footage, let's say in this case like 8K raw footage, and then you create a proxy file, which is a low res version of that file for playback inside of Premiere Pro. So you'll edit with the proxies where it, the quality is not as good as your original, but it plays back smoothly. So you can create proxies on a laptop, anything like that. And once you're done editing, you can color grade your original footage, all that mamma jamma and export, Premiere automatically renders your original footage. It ignores the proxies, so your final file looks good. Now for a quick shameless plug. If you're new to my channel, feel free to like and subscribe. I make videos like this all the time on filmmaking, animation, video editing. I have like 200 plus something videos. It's been a fun journey and I plan to keep doing it. So thanks for being here. Now, inside of Premiere Pro, there's a few different ways to create proxies. There's the easy way, in my opinion. So let's say we're inside of Premiere Pro. Um, like I am here, and you can highlight all your footage, something like that. As we can see here, I have three clips that are the 8K footage. It's a red raw code, so it's really tasking on my computer. Um, playing back at one fourth quality, plays back pretty smoothly, but it could be better. So what I would do, so what I would do is highlight all of my footage, right click, proxy, and create proxies. Then it opens up a dialog box and you have a drop down with some different options for your proxies. Now, when you are creating proxies this way, make sure to choose a format that you're happy with, maybe QuickTime on a Mac. I always choose H.264 because I'm on a PC. Um, it doesn't really matter, you can choose whatever you want. And then I would choose a resolution um, that matches my aspect ratio for my proxies. In this case, 1024 by 540 is the same aspect ratio as, uh, 4096 by 2160, stuff like that. So when the proxy is created, it'll have the same width and diameter. Now, if it's like 16 by nine footage, let's say like 4K 3840 by 2160, you're gonna wanna go with like 1280 by 720. So the aspect ratio stays the same. Simple math, follow it, it'll always work. So let's create some proxies for my 8K footage and learn how to use them. Uh, let's do 1024 by 540 next to original media and proxy folder and click OK. So we're creating the footage, it's next to the original media in a proxy folder. Um, you could choose another location, but I always choose next to my footage, that's where you should put it anyways in my opinion. So, but now when you create a proxy, it opens up a proxy job as you can see on screen. Now what's happening right now is Adobe Media Encoder just opened up on a different screen automatically and automatically started a proxy job. And you can see that it's rendering these proxies as we speak. Now I'll speed this up so you can kind of get to the end and we'll learn how to turn proxies on and turn proxies off inside of Premiere Pro. Okay, so as we can see, um, our proxy job has finished rendering. We have three files created here. If you click on the file name, it kind of shows where it's been created. Um, because my red footage is separated into different folders all along, each red file has its own folder. Inside of that folder, I have a proxy file folder with the proxy of the footage. Um, if you have a footage folder with a huge list of footage inside, there'll be one proxy footage folder with all of your proxies inside of that. Now, once your proxies are created, it's very easy to toggle them on and off inside of Premiere Pro. All you have to do is click this little plus icon and bring on a new button right here called Toggle Proxies. Bring this into here, add it to your Premiere Pro button list, um, apparently. Um, you click the button and it turns the proxy on. As you can see, the footage changed a little bit, but when we play it back, we can play it back at full resolution, no problem. And now you have proxies. Let's do a new sequence or just open up a new view. Even inside your regular source viewer, proxies still work. Plays back just fine, like so. P.S. This is a woodworking documentary I'm working on right now. Pretty cool, cutting board. You can see the final piece right here. Um, Legend of Zelda cutting board, not bad. Now, um, that's an easy way to make proxies, turn them on and off in your video. Now, once you render inside of Premiere Pro, don't worry, it'll automatically render your original media. I get that question a lot. Um, don't worry, render's fine. 
Um, as far as like color grading and stuff, you, you do want to color grade your original media. Um, that's always a, a big issue, especially for like red footage or something where it's like metadata color grading basically. Um, but you, you can also lay LUTs and stuff on top of proxy footage. It'll give you some like discernation or like understanding of how like the footage will look as long as you don't change the base color. Now, for me, there's another way that you can make proxies that is a little more interesting because I personally, whenever I create um, proxy media, I don't always like choosing from the list that they give you. I'd rather, you know, in some cases make 1080p or HD proxy footage because my computer plays 1080p footage back with no problems. So I can have 4K plus media and edit with 1080p footage and it still looks good on the screen. I still like enjoy the look of sharp HD footage while I'm editing versus like blurry footage. It's kind of like 1280 or by 540 pixels. It gets kind of annoying after a while to see like a uncrisp image. Now, one way to do it is to add an ingest preset, create a new preset inside of Premiere and do it this way. I've done it before, um, but it, it's a little finicky. Like this ingest setting doesn't match the footage aspect ratio, although it's supposed to. So this is how I create proxies whole new way. So what I'll do is I'll actually highlight all my footage. I'll right click and export the media. Um, so highlight all the footage you want to export, export media and create the preset right here. So what I'll do is actually change all of my settings to something that I know my computer can edit back without any issue. So let's make the height and width 1080p. So it'll be 2048 by 1080 final footage. That's an easy way to do it for any footage if you do their height with the locked thing. 23.976 square pixels. Make sure the frame rate of your proxies matches the frame rate of your footage. Choose the resolution you wanna work with. In this case, I'm choosing 1080p. You may want to choose 4K. Some computers handle 4K no problem. And then match the frame rate and your proxies will play back without issue. Um, I'll encode it at a, a slower or a less bit rate to make it a proxy version of the file. Um, this footage doesn't have audio, so I'm going to get rid of the audio for these proxies. If your footage does have audio, make sure the audio is turned on. Now you can create a preset right here, like add new preset or something like that save preset, click this, call it proxy 1080. Um, but you always want to make sure that your aspect ratio is matching your footage. Just make sure of that. And then click Q. Once you click Q, it's going to prompt the footage inside of uh, Adobe Media Encoder. Now I will highlight this footage and I'll choose a new place to save it. In this case, a new proxy folder. I'm going to create my own. Right click new um, folder and then do proxies uh, 1080p select folder and I'll render the footage now you may ask this is a bunch of steps to create proxy footage in reality it's not too many steps you just highlight all your footage um, export it it's gonna have to export it anyways if you create proxies it's just I get to choose every setting along the way and if you make a new preset, you can do it that way. Now, creating a new ingest preset also works, but like I said before, I find it has some problems, but at the end of this tutorial, I'll show you how to make an ingest preset, no problem at all. Okay, um, the proxies that I customized are now created. Now we just need to attach them to our media inside of Premiere Pro. So once you've exported manually some proxy files, um, what you'll do is you'll highlight all of your footage inside of Premiere Pro, right click and do attach proxies or go to proxy and then attach proxies. Now it opens up a dialog box. It's like, you know, a missing linked footage dialog box inside of Premiere Pro. We'll click attach. Everything's showing up on the other screen, so I gotta drag it over. Um, <laughs> funny. Now what we'll do is actually find our proxy folder that we created, proxies 1080p. Um, find the first file. We're attaching uh, 002C016, 002C1230X7. Red naming conventions are the best. Um, click that and click OK. Now it will automatically find all of our other media because, you know, it's all in the same folder. But now if we uh, um, play back the proxy footage, 
it is now HD footage and not like 540p footage. So it's still HD, it looks nice. It looks nice on screen, it looks nice and sharp for me. Um, and yeah, it looks a lot nicer. Let's try a different one inside of our, let's try the last one. Yeah, the, the Legend of Zelda one. Uh, there's that, it looks good. I like it. And if we actually right click the footage and go to reveal and explore or on a Mac reveal and finder, while proxy toggle is turned on, it should reveal the proxy file um, on the explorer. And boom, uh, proxies, 1080p, there's the file right there. Looks good to me. I can actually play this back on my computer. And it's actually like nice footage to play back. So that's why I like taking the long route to make proxies. Um, I get to make HD footage. Um, and if you want, you can actually create an ingest preset for proxies, which is pretty simple um, to have it preloaded inside of Premiere Pro at all times when you right click and create proxies. So inside of Media Encoder, this is kind of funny, um, uh, for Preset Browser and here Media Encoder, um, we're going to create an ingest preset for proxies. So click this little plus icon for create encoding preset. And you choose your encoding preset. Let's call this test. You would, based on, I guess that doesn't matter, but choose your basic video settings, all that stuff, your encoding preset, 808. You can actually see I've done this before where I've had the 1080p footage and we'll call it test uh, uh, ing or I for ingest and click OK. And then what we'll do is create the plus icon again and create ingest preset. Now we're going to call this new preset one or call this test underscore uh, proxy. So it's a test proxy ingest preset. We will transcode files to destination. You can kind of turn this on or off. It doesn't really matter too much because we'll choose it differently inside of Premiere Pro. Um, but we're going to base it on a preset H.264 and base it on this preset called test I, which is the one we just created. So we're choosing the preset we just created to create an ingest preset. Um, and that's pretty much it. And you click OK. And now back to Premiere Pro, we'll right click our footage uh, proxy and then create proxies. And then we will add ingest preset. Now we have to find that file that we just created deep down in the documents of our computer where Media Encoder stores those types of files for ingest presets. So we'll go to Documents on a PC, Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder 13.0, which is the latest one I have, and then go to Presets and actually find that preset file. Now the pathway on a Mac is going to be a little bit different, but it should be mostly the same. Documents, Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder, so on and so forth. Um, I'll probably leave a comment down below on the ex exact file path for a, a Mac just to show you. So, or in the description, just check it out there. So we can actually add this ingest preset called test proxy for Premiere Pro and click open. So the ingest preset we just created inside of media encoder is now in our create proxies. Now I've done this before. You can see it here, 1080p, 23 frames per second, ingest eight by eight, because from here, you can't choose a frame rate. So if it was a 60 frames per second video, I want the frame rate to match, you know, so on and so forth. But when I did that before, my aspect ratio got all screwed up for some weird reason. So I just stopped doing it this way and I did it the long way, which is, in my opinion, not that much longer and still works fine. You just render the media in Media Encoder and then attach the proxies. It works fine for me. So there's a few things we learned from this video today. We learned how to create proxies directly inside of Premiere Pro with their preloaded presets that work totally fine. And you can use them every time. I've used them a lot. You can make a custom proxy the long way. I call it the long way. It's not that long. Um, where you can make like 1080p footage, 4K footage. You could choose it, choose a preset as you go and create proxies and then attach those files. But there's a loop on that. So sometimes cameras make proxy files along. So like, let's say I'm recording uh, the really crazy HD footage and your camera will create a subfile, you know, inside of the file, and it's like a low quality version of that file, so for playback or something. Some cameras do that. I know my RED camera can create ProRes footage along with creating the R3D footage, so I have a ProRes version of that file. Um, and the same method we used before, you can actually have a folder of those that piece of the, that footage and use attach proxies to attach 
you know, those files to that folder or the files to that footage. And then the last thing we learned was how to create an ingest preset for Premiere Pro going forward so you don't have to do the long way anymore. You just like click create proxy, pick your favorite preset. Um, and that's about it. Proxies are great. It does speed up your workflow. It makes things play back a lot smoother on Premiere Pro. Um, and to answer any of those crazy questions, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it again. Uh, yes, when you render in Premiere Pro, <laughs> I'm like a broken record. Uh, it, uses, it uses your original media. Don't worry about your proxy footage. It's still going to be in the comment section. Somebody's going to ask. I swear. <laughs> Anyways. Um, that's about it for today. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of the channel. If you are new to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe. And that's all I have for the day. So thank you very much. My hat matches my shirt. It's on purpose. A lot of good films coming out recently. And this was a big one. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. As always, I'm Max. Catch you guys next time. Peace.